our world and beyond space in partnership with the European Space Agency. To respond to the challenges posed by man and nature, we need quick information showing us what's happening on the ground. We need to constantly monitor the evolution of the global environment while being able to quickly focus on the local regions when the need arises. We're here at ESA's Earth Observation Centre in Ezrin, Frascati, Italy. And this antenna is capturing data from a data relay satellite and it is bouncing data from the Envysat satellite which is orbiting the Earth 14 times a day. At the European Centre for Earth Observation, the data from satellites around the planet is being constantly received, analysed, archived and distributed around the world. There is a broad spectrum of services. That's an important thing to understand about satellites that monitor the Earth. They're very flexible. The types of services that are provided range from monitoring sea ice extent in the Baltic Sea to guide shipping and reduce fuel use by the icebreakers that are opening the routes to monitoring the extent of tropical forests and assessing deforestation rates to protect those forests. Another threat to forests and woodlands are wildfires. Every year, firestorms spread through European forests, leaving vast, burned areas. Satellite pictures allow authorities to visualize the scale of disaster and provide adequate assistance. The catastrophic 2007 forest fires in Greece are a good example. This kind of situation, we need a rapid assessment of the damages to react and to help the decision makers to rehabilitate uh, all the damages and to plan how to work fast. When a series of massive forest fires broke out in several areas of Greece, killing 84 residents and firefighters, Greek authorities requested European help. This came in the form of high-resolution satellite images of about 3,000 square kilometers of burned out land. This resolution was delivered for the first time to us, free of charge, and facilitated too much our services to deal with the extreme situation that we were facing. For this, we thank this program, because otherwise we had to hire airplanes to photograph the situation to assess. Both in case of emergencies and for everyday environmental observations, satellite pictures are obviously helpful. But currently Europe doesn't have enough satellites to ensure constant monitoring of how our planet is changing. The next goal of European scientists and politicians is the full-scale, continuous, global monitoring for the environment and security, GMES, also known as Copernicus. If you look at the case of disasters, it means you have to have an organisation there 24 hours a day, 365 days a year capable of answering the phone when the call comes from anywhere in the world, capable of tasking the satellites immediately to acquire the data over, for example, a disaster area, capable of acquiring the data, processing it, analysing it, extracting the important information and capable of delivering it to the people who need it in the field quickly. Such a system may be up and running in the next few years when new satellites will have replaced their predecessors orbiting the Earth. Both optical and radar observation devices are needed to ensure a complete picture in any weather conditions, any time of day. If you have flooding, um, it's cloud covered because it rains and therefore it's cloudy. So normally satellites in the optical domain can't look through clouds. So what you need is radar satellites 
uh, radar, as uh, is well known, can go through the clouds, even through rain layers, and you can get information independent of cloud coverage and independent of sunlight. So even at night you get information. So you, you take this information, which is all weather, day and night information, through the clouds, and you can assess the situation immediately once the satellite flies over. GMES operates thanks to international funding and research. The European Union is covering the costs and taking responsibility for managing the future services. What global monitoring for environment and security is all about is making a huge quantum leap, taking examples of projects that have been carried out with many interested users but on a demonstration basis and making the big step to provide those services on an operational basis. It's very similar to what was done 25 years ago for meteorology. The scale of the project is truly global. People will be able to get accurate and complete forecasts of chemical composition of the atmosphere several days in advance in the same way that today they get accurate temperature and wind conditions reports. In 10 years from now, you will have a much better access to information through GMS. You will have a combination of observations from satellites combined with uh, other measurements uh, taken in the air, at the ocean and at land. Uh, combining this information with forecast models with predictions, you will be able to know the state of the environment pretty well. Five types of satellites are being developed specifically for the GMES program. Called Sentinels, they will fill the gaps in the next few years, providing continuous radar data, visual detection, land and ocean monitoring, as well as enhanced meteorological services for everybody's use. For regular citizens, Hopefully they won't notice it in the same way that they don't notice it when we launch a new meteorological satellite. They should have better services, better security. They should have their national and local and regional organizations who take care of the environment for them, should have better data to let them make better decisions, more promptly, better informed on behalf of those citizens. So GMES should and will contribute to increasing the quality of life for citizens, but hopefully they won't notice it. They'll just see life improving and they'll be more secure. Better management of our natural resources, cleaner water and air, more efficient urban planning. GMS has the potential to improve our lives by keeping an eye on the changing world around us.